Hello and welcome to Planko Spotlights. My name's John T from Geekism and I'm going to be your host for this Coaster Spotlight. I say coaster, this actually came to us as a park file, but it does just contain a single coaster. Uh, so I'm going to be taking a look at it as a coaster. I'm going to say coaster a few more times. Coaster, coaster, coaster. And I just wanted to say that as best as we can, we're going to be dishing out the files that come into Planko Spotlights to the people who uh, have sort of areas of expertise. Now, I'm, uh, as far as coasters is concerned, a keen idiot. So anything really realistic will be going to a few other guys. But I am going to be taking a look from time to time at what we're going to be calling show coasters, uh, where the, uh, the emphasis is more on the scenery and the way the coaster interacts with that scenery, uh, rather than uh, trying to really stretch out and get the most realistic coaster possible. With all of that in mind, and with no further ado, this is the Isolated Monastery by Rogue Arthur. You can head over to the workshop and find it there, make sure you click subscribe, give it a rate, and also chuck down a comment as well. Awesome coaster, Arthur. And if you really want, you can spell his name right as well, he'd love that. <laughs> On his submission, Arthur says that this started out as a Dwarven-inspired build, but since it was snowy outside, I changed course. This ended up being a Dwarven monastery in the end. I attempted to make a coaster, which turned out pretty decent for one of my first attempts. One of the first things I'm noticing is this really great path interaction here, really great use of path and terrain, and then path off terrain uh, quite well. If this is one of the first things you've done, Arthur, you've really handled the path system uh, pretty well because it's it's not the easiest system to work with. Uh, a few of the things I'm noticing is on this large tower here, we've got actual windows as well, and the fact that you've built those, uh, those windows out using uh, wooden planks rather than using the in-game windows uh, is really nice and adds a great bit of depth to this building. Uh, I can definitely see some Dwarven features and some Dwarven influences, but I think overall the build has a bit more of an Asian feel, or maybe even something like uh, Byzantine, um, something like that. Um, it's really nice, very colourful, and I think that's probably the thing that takes it away from dwar Dwarven, because usually Dwarven stuff is pretty much just stone and maybe one or two precious metals. Uh, again, there's some really great path interaction here uh, as the coaster comes away down there. And then we have these very sort of traditional, these, these thousand steps, uh, the idea that people here would make a pilgrimage up to the monastery and at the top of it, they would be able to ride a coaster. Uh, this large structure is not just a station. It also has some uh, shops in there as well. We have an incredibly fancy toilet. We love a good toilet here on Planko Spotlight. Uh, it needs a bit of a clean up though because there are... Uh, mouse is running all over the place. Look at that. Uh, really, really nice details here as well using the uh, the wooden brackets. Uh, love how that's been um, been detailed, to be honest with you. One thing I pretty much always do with my uh, TARDIS boxes, as I call these, these little block boxes that people disappear into, is build rather large structures about it around them. But it just shows you there that you can quite easily keep that very small structure and it still makes sense and within the law, you know, still fits the space. Uh, really love the uh, the flags here coming off and the ropes some great use of the pieces there over on the right we have uh, our little food court that contains a star fox and a missy goose you can come and get a coffee and a donut which sounds good and again just really nice use of some of the pieces the checkered flags here from the go-kart set uh, but recolored to uh, to act as some uh, lovely tapestries there are a couple of billboards in here, and unfortunately, uh, Arthur hasn't supplied anything to go onto them, uh, and he said that nothing's needed, so I don't know whether he actually had images there to make them look like large windows, or they probably wouldn't based on that. Um, but yeah, I'm not too sure what was meant to go on those, unfortunately, uh, we won't uh, be able to see. Next up, then, we'll take a look at the queue into the ride itself. Uh, we're going to have to push through the crowds here, because I've opened the park up to give it a bit of uh, bit of realism and to get some people in. We start off in quite a nice pre-show building, again, using a billboard. I think maybe some fencing around here would be pretty good, uh, as, uh, as well behaved as the uh, Planko peeps are. I wouldn't uh, really expect them just to follow curbs around like that, so some uh, some little fence pieces might be nice. Nice fireplace though, nice use of the uh, the dragon decal there, and then we exit back outside where we do have some fence pieces and a really great shot of the uh, the first drop of the coaster there. We will be riding the coaster in a moment. Uh, we then head back indoors through a bit of cattle penning and then up a, uh, a large stairway that again looks over at that entrance plaza there. Whoopsie daisy, let's try that again. There we go, looks over that large entrance plaza there and then we head up to the uh, station itself. 
the coaster station itself then has a lovely custom roof. Apart from that, it's relatively plain, although he has taken the time to detail it a little and get rid of the uh, the standard steel there, which I think really adds a lot, quite simply. Really nice trellising work there as well, using the wooden pieces. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll ride the coaster next. So the coaster is a swinging suspended coaster. It's one that you don't see very often actually in the game. It's a, it's a really fun coaster, but quite tricky to build with, to be honest with you. Um, I think some of the transitions in this are a little jarring, and I think the whole coaster could probably benefit from being a little slower to really uh, get the most out of those sweeping turns and sort of sweeping hills that, uh, that this coaster is actually well known for. I think um, I think it has some really great interaction with the terrain and the scenery, especially the custom uh, the custom supports. Even though some of them are probably a little bit too close for comfort. I am a big fan of coasters that go straight into a drop after the station, but it does mean that you have to have a chain list somewhere else. I think Arthur's done a great job here of adding it halfway through the ride, and it almost acts like as a mid-course break run. Uh, I also really love the detail on the uh, on the supports here, especially. I need to actually have a little look because. I'm not too sure what this piece is. Is it the is it the uh, the the ring that's just been turned around? Uh, let me. I want. I want. I really want to find out. I've got the wrong button here. I'm going to click that. Uh, yeah, chain attachment point. Oh, really good. Yeah, that's really nice work. Arthur, you say that this is the first coaster you've built, and uh, it's pretty impressive for a first go, but honestly, I think the uh, the scenery is let down a little bit by the ride itself, and I think it could really benefit from you having another pass at it using some of the techniques and tips that you've picked up uh, since playing the game for a little bit longer. But overall, the scenery is absolutely fantastic. It's a great setting, uh, and it's really, really nice use of some of the pieces in the game. Thanks very much for watching. Check out the Steam Workshop link in the description so you can check out this coaster for yourselves. I'm sure there's lots of little hidden gems that I've missed. And don't forget, everything we do here on the channel is in support of Special Effect, a fantastic charity that provides fun and inclusion for people with disabilities through gaming. You can find more information about them, including ways to donate, in the description as well. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon.